Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming back to the podcast. Today's special guest is Mr. Fran Limos from Mexico. Fran, good to have you on. Thanks, Richard, for inviting me. Thank you absolutely, so much. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been watching your videos off and on for a number of years now, and I'm, I am impressed, I have to say, with how much you've learned and, and how good you've become. I really enjoy those videos. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I tried um, to post um, every time I can, and thank you for following that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. you got <laughs> some fast feet, guy. you got some fast feet. I love that stuff that you're doing. Uh, start us off with your with your background. How did you get started in Irish dancing? Um, well, it, um, I think I was seven years old back in um, probably, I can't remember exactly the year right now, uh, but it was probably 20 years ago, maybe. Um, so my dad is a writer, professional writer in Mexico. Um, so he will be like interacting with all these, uh, art, um, people. Um, and one day he was asked to write something for a tap dance group. So, uh, he went there and he started like collaborating with them and he invited me to join to see how he was working. So I accepted, I went there. And uh, once I saw people moving their feet and just making sounds, to me, it was like very impactful. You know, I was like, wow, that's so cool. So then I asked my dad, I was like, hey, I just, I want to learn this. Can I join? So he said, yes, of course. And um, and I started doing tap dancing. Okay. And uh, that, that's the first thing I did before Irish dancing. But that got me later into Irish dancing. So, you know, just looking videos on YouTube of famous tap dancers or just tap dancing in general. And somehow I just find out like everybody else, this video of river dance, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course I was like shocked, you know, I was just like, wow, this is amazing. This is something that I really need to do. But then like just making, re um, looking for uh, information of Irish dancing in, in the internet, I was like, okay, this is very cool, but I don't think that I'm ever going to be able to make it because I, I, I couldn't believe that that was going on in Mexico probably at that time. It was just right. like, no, it's impossible. Like, so, so then what I did was just like try to imitate what they were doing and, um, and just like try it for fun, you know? So that's what I did for a lot of years until I found um, something very, this is a great story. Uh, something that happened that really changed my life, that got me into Irish dancing was that um, Riverdance came to Mexico back, I guess back in 2002 or 2003, something like that. And of course I, told my parents say hey, I want to go they say yeah let's go right so I, I just I brought with me my tap dancing shoes because I was like so excited maybe they the, the dancers could sign my my shoes or something yeah. you know so and to my surprise um when I was asking for the autographs one person came to me and spoke in Spanish mm. and then I was like what is going on mm. so uh, I asked him like wait where are you from and then he goes and says, Mexico. Wow, that that moment just completely changed my life. I was so shocked in my mind. <laughs> that moment I was like, no way, are you really from Mexico? And he's like, yes, I'm from Mexico. So he was like, do you want, um, I was like, well, oh my God, I just want to do this so badly. And I didn't know that you were um, doing this or a Mexican could ever do something like this at that level. Imagine like river dance, like that level, you know? And I was like, he was like, well, if you want a phone number and an address of someone that can teach you, I can give you one. And I was like, of course, give me that. So yeah. he gave me the phone number of his um, cousin, which later on uh, became my first, uh, my second dance teacher, but the, the, the most important one in my career. Uh, I trained with her a lot of years. So yeah, that's, that's how I got it, uh, into it. Okay. Now who was the dancer in Riverdance and who was the, the cousin that ended up teaching you? Well, the, the dancer, his name is Alex Arguelles. Okay. He is uh, the first Mexican or the only one that has ever get into um, um, river dance, you know? And uh, so, yeah, that, that was, um, that's his name. And his co her cousin, his cousin, sorry, is uh, called Monica, Monica Sosa. She was my first uh, dance teacher. Okay. So, yeah. Hmm. Very good. Now, who had taught them? Who who brought? And as far as you know, Fran, who brought Irish dancing to Mexico? Because I've heard various stories. Okay. Uh, well, what I know is that Irish dancing was brought by this uh, lady teacher 
uh, called Alicia Mosti. Yes. And Alicia was the first ever TCRG in Mexico. And I guess she was the first one to ever taught something here. And that's what I know. And after her, a lot of um, different dancers start to create their own stories, you know. And I think later on, uh, the Drake School with Mr. Carl Drake, yes. um, John and Alex Arguelles happened to be one of uh, his students. Uh, okay. But every, I think everyone started with Alicia at some point. I right. also was her school at, uh, in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I was shocked. Like, I couldn't even believe that. At that time, someone was doing that at that level, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very impactful. Well, that's pretty cool. So, what age were you when you started Irish dancing? Uh, I was, I think I was 11 or about to turn 11. Definitely, I didn't start uh, younger as other dancers. But uh, for my, I guess for my luck, I already did tap dancing for like six years at that moment. So, it wasn't that hard for me to get into, you know, dancing. So uh, doing Irish dancing, so yeah. Right, I was going to ask you that because I had, um, when I first started, I didn't. It was when the internet was in its primitive state in the like the, the mid late nineties, and there I didn't know of any Irish dance teachers in Houston where I'm at, and I found a video. I know it's one of these uh, things is Irish dance made easy, and that was the name of it. And I started trying to copy, like you said, copy what you see, uh -huh. and then I found the teacher, and then I learned the right way, you know. So did. I'm assuming your experience may have been a little bit the same and that you were trying to mimic what you saw, but because you didn't have professional feedback to say, Hey, no, no, do it this way, stand this way, all that kind of stuff. It was once you actually found the teacher, you kind of had to undo some bad habits you'd picked up by copying it. Did you go through that as well? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So one thing that I noticed at that time is that uh, even though I was a tap dancer and they were doing uh, different moves, one thing that we both have in common is rhythm. I think for me, it's a rhythm is the language. Right. So just hearing that, uh, what they were doing, I just try to imitate based on my tap dance technique. But of course, it's completely different. And I already had a lot of trouble uh, when my teacher was trying me to uh, get the right idea or the right uh, technique, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it was difficult, of course, uh, uh, in, in being a tap dancer already. And I just wanted to do it. I was like, oh, yeah, but I already learned this move on the Internet and I will show it. And they will be like, yes, but not really. <laughs> like right, that is right. not the technique. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely. It was it was challenging, but uh, and learning both techniques at the same time, I guess, is something very cool. So, yeah, I like it. Did you find it hard going from? Maybe let's say you have like one class a week in tap and one class a week in Irish and you go back and forth and you have to kind of switch your tap brain on and then the next class, switch your Irish brain on because there are differences. How did you find mm -hmm. that have to transition like that back and forth all the time? Well, um, it was very, very interesting, but I, I found it, I found it very uh, fun to do, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that I uh, ever, um, got confused at some point on like doing both i guess um i guess just like growing up i i learned that uh both of them were like uh some something that i really like to do and i spend my time doing irish dancing i spend my time doing tap dancing and i never got confused i guess what i like to do um was like of course i was hearing my teachers all the time like cross your knees or right. um be on your toes all the time and tap dancing would be like no like drop your heels and mm -hmm. I, I was like no i, I can't do that <laughs> but uh, one thing that i really loved that was just to mix them both you know like um me dancing by myself in my house at some point i was just like that young i was just like um what is what it does it how does it feel to uh, mix both of them you know so um that's what i always get fun with like mix it. I develop this particular style of dancing which most of my teachers in Irish dancing, Irish dancing didn't like but at the same time it was something different that I offer you know and that I really put trust on with me you know like mixing both you know so I classes during the week and then another three uh, of Irish dancing I never got um, I never find it difficult to do you know so yeah mm, okay and, uh, you know, going back to some other folks that, that I know of that's done tap and Irish, like you take Michael Flatley. I mean, he was primarily an Irish dancer, but he had taken 
a few, you know, a little bit of tap, some flamenco. And you could see some of that, especially in, in the first river dance, you could see a little bit of him experimenting and kind of fusing the two together. Uh, it was very interesting. So, and then now with modern Irish dance and choreography, all the stuff that we were told not to do 20 years ago, now it's in style, all those drop heels and all the, you know, weird trebles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of worked around for you, yeah, you know, because that's kind of your style yes, with yes. some of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just discovered that like uh, nowadays these new dance moves are mm. very related to tap dance. I'm like, no, like you said, this is a new move. It's not. It's already a tap <laughs> dance move. You're just changing it, making it look Irish, right. but it's a tap dance move. So yeah, yeah, cool. And and there are. Um, a fair amount of people that I've interviewed that, that they don't like that fusion and they'll say, nah, you know, there's too many other styles that are coming into Irish dancing, but then some people love it. They say, well, it keeps it fresh. It keeps new ideas. We kind of make them our own in a way. Uh, obviously you, you can appreciate fusing the styles a little bit, but I guess you could kind of see where if you're more orthodox, you're going to want to keep it where it looks like Irish yeah. dancing. Yeah. So talk about the, your, your competition days. I, I don't, you're all retired now, aren't you? You're, you're not still competing, are you? Yeah, I'm, I, I stopped competing like three years ago. Um, I just lost the count because of the pandemic stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm retired right now because I am not feel, feeling uh, that emotion of competing anymore. But I, I, I guess you never know. Maybe I'll be back this December at the Rectus or something. <laughs> I, uh, just how I feel. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, you're asking about my competition days, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it was. It was. Um, I think it was one of the best um, um, episodes in my life, definitely. But later on, it became really rough, and I, I guess that's why I'm. I decided to take a break from it uh, for a bit. But uh, in the beginning, um, there was two fashion in Mexico, and um, one was in Mexico City, and other one in a place called Acapulco, which yeah. I think you. Here oh, yeah. uh, it's a <laughs> very tourist place, great beach, everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we were, um, I compete there for at least, I guess, um, five years probably. Um, and it was very fun to see uh, the Irish dance community of Mexican people and everything it was very cool. And um, I did my grades, I think I just went to beginner and then I just jumped into novice and then prize winner and then i just like in two years i got into prelim and and then open mm -hmm. very quickly uh but i i really enjoy it and i found i found in that episode of my life that i was a very uh competitive person and, <laughs> and i love that you know i was just like oh i always want to win 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 and i was uh ready you know at what point i was like oh so like, i feel like I'm, I'm the best dancer in mexico right now and i was like yeah. so what, what else can i do now like yeah how i'm gonna push myself Right. Then my teachers were like, well, you can go to the Erectus. Mm -hmm. well, okay, whatever. Like, I'm going to win this. And then I just <laughs> get into my first Erectus ever. And I just see these amazing male dancers. And I was like shocked. I was like, oh, instantly I just felt very frightened. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that I knew, I was like, no, this is this is something else. But, I, but at the same time, I was just like very... Um, optimistic on my goals and everything and i uh dance i guess my first erectus i i got a third place and qualified for the worlds and and that for me was like huge i was like right going to the worlds what is this i've been dancing like for three years or something it's yeah. crazy um and uh yeah it was it was pretty fun uh, doing that and once i hit my first worlds uh for my surprise i i guess i, I was just feeling very uh, emotional and inspirational during those days because for me uh, coming from where I am in Mexico like I've never imagined to get to that level really you know I was just doing it for myself but once I noticed that there was something bigger than me I was just like wow like this is huge and to my luck uh, in my first world I like, got a recall and I became the first not the first not the only Mexican but the first Latin American to ever recall in the history of Irish dancing so That's awesome uh that was that was huge yeah. that was great and, and once once I got that I was like okay so uh I'm not frightened it anymore like I was just like this is what I want to do like I want to become one of the best and um and that's what I did. You know, I keep competing. I um I did pretty well. I think, you know, I started going to uh fashion in the United States. 
um, I of course I did nationals a lot, and I as well I became the first um, first Latin American to ever be on the podium. I got fourth place, something awesome. I don't remember exactly right now. And uh, and then at the worlds, you know, I was keep keeping uh, trying to keep my um, getting higher places and um the best i did was sixth place in the world which was very huge that was in back in 2018 in glasgow and um and i was very happy you know just to to reach that level that high and 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 yeah i, I won a few raptors as well and it was it was pretty fun i guess uh i really had the time of my life uh going uh overseas and just um experimenting all that stuff uh, by myself and um it was really cool yeah so well that's, that's awesome. kind of my yeah Thanks, the, that's a lot of good accomplishments and you know it's always nice to have that first you know you were the first to do this or the first to do that uh there's that's that, that hard work paying off now who was your teacher during most of your competitive years uh well at the beginning i started with the school of this lady called alicia the first teacher right. in mexico Right. Uh, my teacher was Monica, but she wasn't a registered teacher or teacher. Uh, but she was the one that was teaching me in a city that is like two hours away from where I am. So oh, every okay. weekend, my parents would be driving me two, two hours to that city just to take three hour lesson and then back for another two hours and do that. I did that like for five years. Wow. Uh, so it was crazy. And, and, and then at one point, um, I guess my teacher, Monica, just had to like she saw that I was doing very well and she was like well I think it's time to take take it to the next level so we transferred to the industry school of Irish dance okay with uh Neil Rick. yep and he became my, my mentor my teacher my 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 everything you know I own that guy a lot because he really helped me through uh everything all the process for me coming here was very expensive to fly to the U.S. every time fly into England Ireland everywhere it was it was uh, my family, my family couldn't afford it, you know, so he, he would mm -hmm. just, uh, I, I saw him as my dad, you know, like he protected me when I was at the US, uh, I would stay in his house for like three months training with him. And uh, it was something that really changed my life, the way I, I see things now and, and the way I focus on myself uh, for my future. Um, he really changed my perspective. And until this day, I'm, I'm still part of, of his school um, now teaching so yeah. yeah well i took from neil when i moved into san antonio for a job i had taken a job down there and i couldn't i didn't want to commute back and forth to houston with my first teacher or i would have stayed with him i liked him but uh, i took from neil and i had a, a good experience with him he was a, a great teacher i was only with him maybe 10 or 11 months but uh wow he had just got his adcrg at the time i think for slightly but maybe a little bit before I started. And it was always neat when he would come in from a fashion, we would pick his brain. It's like, well, did you see anything new? Or, or what did you notice? And it was neat to have that perspective, having a judge as a teacher, because, you know, he was going all over the place and judging. And he always had these crazy rhythms that we could never figure out. <laughs> so I remember that he had these fast feet. It's like, slow that down, do that again. But yeah, I, uh, I, I learned quite a bit from him in the short time that I was there. And, and, uh, I, now that I teach, I've been teaching all these years. It's, I still reflect back to some of my own students on some of the stuff that, that I picked up from him. So, <laughs> and my other teachers. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty you, certain you didn't know that. Yeah. You can learn something from anybody. So yeah, it was good. Great guy for sure. Um, so you you hung up your your competitive shoes. Why? What told you? I mean, was it COVID or was it was it just something else that you just said, "Hey, I need to take a break from this," or was it just time for the next chapter of your dancing career? Well, I think I just it was a, a, a mixture of everything, you know, the pandemic and and also myself. I think I just found myself um, on a conflict of like, am I doing this for the right purpose? Am I competing for? Uh, me inspiring others or am I competing for my personal uh ego you know yeah. and and when, when I um I think at one point I was just very stressed because uh, of course that I was breaking all these records coming from Latin America and and, and of everyone else wanted to be at the same level so they were they were pushing very hard to, you know to to beat me or to do better than me in a in a good way you know right. always in a good way um but but i think i just became very obsessed with the uh idea of like 
I'm going to be the first one to ever get in the podium of the worlds. And like, I just want to be remembered for that or, you know, something. Right. And uh, it was very crazy. My brain couldn't, couldn't take it. And, um, and I, I just got a break, you know, I was just like, this is it. Like I can't do this anymore. I'm not enjoying it. I'm just dancing because I want to win something to, uh, you know, to show off. And right. then I was like, this is, this is not correct. I, I always been dancing, uh, because the love of it, because the love of the art and to inspire others. I don't, I don't feel that this is the right path for me. And right. eventually just being very obsessed with everything when I didn't, when I didn't get what I expected, I couldn't take it very well. So then I was like, this is not going good. And this is not what I want to do anymore. Right. You know? So then like I, I reached uh that sixth place and i think i did another world and then i was like that's it like i I just this is not the person i want to become and i need to reflect on on everything that i'm doing you know like all of this is um then i understand uh that in the pandemic during the pandemic that um i i I needed to be happy because in, in the pandemic i got this episode of my life where like i had an anxiety attack or a panic attack to say it uh, my brain was so stressed and I went to the hospital. I almost died, you know, hmm. like I couldn't even breathe. It was horrible. And after that day, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not ever going to do something that is not going to make me happy. You know, like right. if I need to take a break from competitions right now, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put myself on top of everything. Um, and I, I was like, I don't want to die, you know, like yeah. this experience was so bad and I, I don't want to go through that anymore. Um, and as well, very disappointing of competitions at some point with everything that was going on. Not everyone was being very um, fair, not with me, but like with other people that I've seen, I was just like, oh, this is not a, I, I find it like, and with all the respect, because I love the community and everything, but I find it a little bit toxic and a little bit, the Irish dancing world is going to places where, I don't think it's correct, you know, like they are forgetting, some of them are forgetting of the real thing and not, and now it's more about, um, um, you know, um, the flashing of it, you know, like the dresses, the wigs, the super tan, everything. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel yeah. that I belong to that part of the world right now. So I just, right. I just step up. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm a little more of a traditionalist when it comes to that. But uh, I understand everything has to progress a little bit. But I think sometimes it does go a little bit over the top. And your story there about, you know, questioning your own desires to compete and what you're in it for. There's a lot of people that I know, people I've worked with in the past, former students that went to a more competitive school or whatever. They they think that's what they want. They think they want to compete, compete, compete. It's going to be their life for, from now until the day they die. And then they, you hear about them a few years later. Maybe you lose touch with them. They come back and say, hey, are you still dancing? How would you do? I didn't even heard your name around in a while. Oh, I stopped. I got burned out. I didn't want to do it anymore. It's like, oh, it's a shame. You know, like what happened? And, and then a lot of times they'll say, well, I was pushed too hard. I didn't have life balance. But it, I hate to see people leave on that note. But I do know what happens probably more than a lot of people think yeah you know? definitely it's rough man. it's rough yeah so what do you think as someone who has gone through all that and someone that's now uh, doing a little bit more teaching on your own you have that perspective what do you think is something people should keep in mind if they find themselves on the track you were on where they're doing really well but maybe they're starting to have those little feelings about questioning their own motives and their own direction well i think uh, the measures that I that I will give to people struggling with the same thing that I did or almost the same is just like uh, you gotta always remember why are you doing this on the first place and reflect about that and um, also know that um, despite the level that you have right now in dancing that doesn't define you a number doesn't define your abilities a placement or a medal or a trophy doesn't do that um, it's way different. This is these are only competitions, and that's just to be an athlete. But to be an artist is something completely different. So in terms of being an artist, there's so many things that you can do, and and it's very important to always remember your worth, you know. And nowadays it's very difficult because I know that everyone is just dreaming on like 
I want to be, I want to be the next world champion. I want to be the next whatever, you know, and, and sometimes it, it, it gets rough, you know, seeing that your dreams are not getting there. Uh, but you got to know that, that uh, a number, a recall, a medal, trophy, not always define how good you are. It's all about perspective. So mm-hmm. always do this because you love it. Not, don't, don't go uh, to chase a trophy or a placement. Right. That is that's not good because the, the reality at the end is that that is uh, it's not the end of the world. You know, mm-hmm. I've I seen dancers that have won everything and all of a sudden they are forgotten very quickly you know, mm-hmm. and, and they feel that, you know, I've been talking to some people that they're like, wow, I just, I, I was the world champion. And now like people don't even remember me or people don't even yeah. do that. So what I would say is like, um, you can, instead of chasing a trophy or a medal or a placement, you need to find a way of be remembered forever, you know, and, and that would be my advice. Just be happy and be great with people. Uh, helpful you know uh, show the path to other ones and that will get you uh to be remembered in history you know people will be talking about you because you were a very kind person um a good human being so i think uh it's there's a lot of more important things than just winning a trophy Uh, what matters is your opinion of you and what your teachers think and your family and i guess uh they will always be there to support you you know so uh don't get distracted by the price on the time the yeah. price will happen of course but uh the price is just um is, is is the gift of you really enjoying the process you know so right. just get in love with it get in love with going to class every day uh being around your people and mm-hmm. and then if it happens appreciate it be grateful and then start working again don't be sleepy on dreaming like oh now i'm the best right so whatever no you win that day and the next day you gotta work again for it mm-hmm. so you make sure that you are always very humble and grateful for everything you have right do you think Fran, that there's too much of an emphasis on competition in the modern irish dance world and and it certainly wouldn't apply to every school because you know we we all know there are some schools that are really competitive and there are some schools that are recreational and there's everyone in between but just in general when you look up uh, Irish dancing on social media, there's a lot of, you know, every picture is at a fash or at, you know, dressing up and trophies and here's what I won. And there's a big emphasis on the competition. Do you think there's too much emphasis in general on competition? No, yes, definitely. Definitely. I think it's just, uh, these days it's just all like, um, and this is just my perspective. It doesn't sure. have to uh, mean that this is actually happening, but my perspective is that it's mostly the message that you are given is if you're a winner, then you will be able to be on all these covers, on all these attention, fame, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you're not a winner, then you're not part of this. Right. That is oh, that is rough because that makes you makes you very competitive and, and, and it, it can destroy you. You know, like right. kids are growing up thinking that they need to win something in order to be in that cover or in order to be in that program or in order to be doing stuff you know and it's just like no it's no so i really think that they're pushing that because it's so like that's the only thing you can do you know competitions is everything and it's not the truth you know like there is way more things to do than just getting on the stage and competing against people that's just a small part of it but the reality is that irish dancing and the irish culture is in general is so big so Mm -hmm. like um we're just uh getting the attention of just one small thing that is um it's cool but it's but but at the end it's not everything like there's a lot of things that you can do and and also i think that uh the idea of uh being a great dancer or or winning a a trophy or something it doesn't uh means that that you are the the greatest dancer because some people are great great athletes that's what i see now like great athletes and I've seen very few people that are both doing both, which they are, of course, but like just to to sell that idea of like, oh yeah, like win trophies or stuff. No, like you are forgetting about the art. I think people are just disconnected of that now. Like it's just more about, you know, train. If you don't, it, it's like this, I see these commercials of like, if you want to, you see this world champion, she's training with my program. So if you want to be as good as her, you got to do my program. And it's just like, no, like what? What about the trust in your teachers? What about, you know, like, it's just, 
conflict confliction over confliction all the time and it's just it, it's it's blurry like i i don't i don't get what they're really trying to sell you know like now it seems like every everyone is like a superstar you know <laughs> which right. is cool it's, it's cool but it's not the right idea you see like all these people's getting these interviews after winning their competitions and like with big lights and and i'm just like oh my god like yeah no like that's one part but it's not everything it's not the end of the world you can do shows you can do a bunch of stuff you know and mm. and yeah that's right. my my opinion well you know in all these podcasts that i've done and i think you're the hundred and 45th or 146th one of the two i don't don't quote me as you're one of the two and i've interviewed everyone from og dance captains or leads and shows to world champions to you name it to to just people who've never competed and you you touch on something that i think about a lot you you especially nowadays you have programs that are covering these these competitions which i think is good to, to give people a peek inside of that world but you're right that the people who get most of the attention are the ones that win. With these podcasts, I've interviewed people who've never broken top 10. And their stories to me are sometimes more inspiring than maybe stories you hear of the people who win everything. And to me, I get a lot of satisfaction hearing about the underdog, the the one that that never gave up, but never broke 10th place or fifth place or something like that, or maybe even never got recalled, but they love it so much that they've continued and now they're a teacher and now they're producing dancers, maybe far better than they ever could have danced on their own. Yes, it's true. It's true, man. Definitely. I, I see the same as you, you know, like I, sometimes I think like, yeah, the winner is important, but what about all these other 80 kids that dance yeah. that day? Like, are they not important? You know, that's the idea that I'm getting or that I got when I was competing, you know, like, Okay, so being fourth place is okay as well. Like there's people that are not, n don't want to be the first place all the time. And then there's nothing wrong about it, but the society or the way Irish dancing is going now, is just like, that's it, it's him. And the second place is the second place and, and nobody cares. And it's just like, no, yeah. no, it's not like that. Everyone deserves uh, uh, um, their, their part, you know, like it's just, it's rough. You're right on yeah. that, definitely. Yeah. You know, and we didn't grow, I say we, I'm, you know, I'm in my later forties. I mean, people that were competing with me back in 20, 25 years ago or something like that, we didn't have social media. We didn't have Facebook or MySpace was barely even a thing back then. Nowadays with the Instagrams and TikTok and all that kind of stuff, it's 24 hours of, of the newest styles, the newest dress, the, you know, all this image stuff. And so these kids face pressure that we would have never, we put, the only pressure we faced back then is what we put on ourselves. Now they can't escape it, you know? And I wonder what damage that's going to do to kids in the long run when they're trying to compete against no, this it, image. No, it, it's bad. It's bad. That's what, that's what I was trying to, yeah. to tell. Like I, I know people that are not able to afford those expensive dresses or those expensive looks or just flying overseas to all these competitions. Me personally, I experienced that, you know, but I, I, I think it's when I'm saying that people forget about the real deal is that all that matters is your talent and your determination. That's what should be judged. You shouldn't be judged by the way you look, the way uh, if your dress is the new one or is the one that was last year and now it's not cool anymore or the weeks, you know, it's just like, no, like focus on the talent, not, not on what, how people look, you know, right. and, 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 and I see it myself with my uh, students in Mexico as well, you know, like I got this kid that is doing pretty good in his competitions at the worlds and everything. But unfortunately his mom was not able to pay him for Montreal this year at the nationals, you know? Yeah. And he was just like, Oh, like, I'm not going. And it, it feels like they had this pressure and I'm like, no, there's no pressure at all. You know, like mm -hmm. you don't do this competition. It's fine. We will get you there another time. Like you don't right. have to be spending all this money all the time. That is not the main thing. You know? So right. yeah, I share so, that with you. Yeah. So I understand, I guess maybe, was it a couple of years ago that you got involved with Trinity? Yeah, I, I did. Um, this is going to be, actually, I'm just, uh, I think in a few weeks, I'm going to uh, uh, get my first anniversary in the company. Okay. But um, I auditioned for them in 2019 at the Worlds in Greensboro. And I just got a call from them uh, a year ago. 
Hmm. So I was shocked. So to be honest, I thought that uh, I was I didn't make it or anything, you know. And especially because uh, I've been trying to all all these shows, you know, like with River Dance and Lord of the Dance and everything that they were asking was like, "Are you a medal holder?" Yes, I am. Did you do this? Yes, I did. But at the end, I was like not accepted, and I was just like, "Okay, so the competitions are not for me. Shows are not for me. <laughs> this is it. Like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna teach." And, yeah and i was like nah like i was but I, I needed that you know so then they called me and i was like no way like yeah this is happening so yeah yeah mm-hmm. so what what was that experience like auditioning and then get uh and then actually starting for them like the first time you went up there and had a class with them well um i mean I, I auditioning the, the day that i auditioned was very very weird because they were teaching me this piece with like percussive stuff and and i was like this is very different from right. everything that i've ever seen you know I was expecting to put my hands on my on my hips and just smile and do treble reels. You know, yeah. it's like that, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but not really. Like everything that they were showing me was so hard to do, so different. And I was shocked. And I was like, well, this is crazy. I think I don't get exactly what they're uh doing. Uh and uh, but definitely like in that show in in that they did in at the worlds was amazing and then i understood i was like okay uh, in my head because i always like to like um i know that lord of the dance and river dance are the biggest shows yep. ever and the most successful but at the same time i can recognize when something is uh m- more deeper into thoughts or just like right. more than just a production it's like sure. ideas coming to life you know then i was like wow this is so inspiring i'm feeling so relatable to this and I just couldn't wait, you know, and, um, and yeah, they called me and once I get there, well, I, I was shocked because all these people that I know from the company, I think are the best, ever, like the, the best talented dancers that I ever met. Like, uh, of course, most of them are like, n- n- like me, like we were, weren't world champions or uh, the greatest dancers. But uh, one thing that I learned there is that it's not always the best ones that are doing competition that are doing the most interesting or creative stuff, you know, like these people that are in the company are artists, not just uh, performers, you know, it's more than just learning a choreography, like they're putting ideas out there. And, uh, and, and man, I was shocked. Like I thought I was like being very cocky, you know, I was like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm Francisco, you know, like everybody <laughs> knows me, like, I, I got this like everything they're gonna do is so easy for me and it was not you know the first day I was learning the choreographs and I was like I couldn't do anything I was I was not able to learn anything everything was so different so confusing so difficult and I was like wow I was scared you know I was scared about all these monsters like they were great dancers great artists and, and uh but yeah at the end I, I they helped me to get into their level and uh, I'm proud to say that I'm one of them now and uh and I really feel proud about this company, definitely for everything they're doing. And and just for them to uh, accept me, it was huge. You know, I was about to quit dancing forever in my life at that point. You know, I was like, not competitions, they're destroying me. Nobody's accepting me in their shows. This is it. I'm going to stop doing it no more. And they completely saved my life, you know, and, and I'm glad that they took that chance on me. And um, for that, I'll be grateful ever. Yes. Right. Well, well, Mark Howard definitely created a revolutionary program with with Trinity years ago, years and years ago. I remember seeing it and it had already been out a few years, I, I probably 20, 25 years ago here in Houston. And I'd seen Riverdance before that. So you, you kind of go into it thinking it's Riverdance. And though there is a lot of stuff that's kind of like Riverdance in there, but there's a, like you say, there's a lot of different things. And I understand now it's even more different than it would have been the like the first generation of it years ago and i was inspired by him and and the work that they've done he's done uh amazing dancers but like you say it's it's a it's a different way of doing irish dance production yeah it's it's not not production um it's not a um how how would they call it um yeah it's a different like we are more into performing arts you know so with our show doesn't have a history it's just different choreographies different ideas coming and um, and and one thing that I really like about that is that we're showing not only one face of Irish dancing, which is what everybody knows, uh, people in a line doing the same treble reel, the same steps. We're we're doing not only that; that is a part of it. But there is so many different um, parts of the Irish dancing uh, world that are not being shown. 
that's this is what I like, you know, like we are trying to reach every aspect of it and just put it out there, you know. Mm. So yeah. Have you gone on any tours with them? I know you're up there training with them, but did you go out and, and do some shows with them yet? Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, okay. I had my first uh, professional tour uh, back on. Um, I started on January this year, and I finished the tour in May. So I I, I moved from uh, Mexico City to Chicago for like four months, <laughs> and I stayed there for the tour. And it was crazy, man. But I was like, I have a school here. I have a bunch of students to attend and everything. I was like, this is my dream. I just gotta go. I gotta get it. You know, I gotta, yeah. I gotta be there. And yeah, it was, it was amazing, man. Like already my, my, my first professional show, and uh, I, I really love it. I think this is the, the place where I belong. You know, like, uh, it's a place where I don't have to be stressed on, on being the best because we don't have uh stars on the show. Like, there's no lead dancers, lead female dancers, or lead male dancers. No, okay. nothing. It's just, it's community. It's always group. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's just the talent and minds of everyone coming together to make something bigger than ourselves. And that is, that is what I was looking for at that moment when everything that I told you about uh, me just getting confused if, if, right. uh, uh, about like, I got to be the best one because then everybody will remember me. And then now I, I'm learning that it's not like that. When you work, work with people uh, to achieve higher goals than you ever imagined, that is, that mm -hmm. is the thing. Like that is what you should be reaching always, you know? So right. um yeah, definitely fit perfect into my view of life now. Yeah. yeah. So you've been on the world stage in the, in the competitive scene, and now you've been on big stages, major stages in the performance scene. What's one difference you've observed between the two? Well, um, definitely, I would say the appreciation of the work, the appreciation of the work. Um, because m m most people in competition will be there just like to see, um, I mean, they see their their kid, their friend, and uh, but it's mostly about like you know like everybody knows uh, that they're gonna see hornpipes, jigs, reels, mm -hmm. um, and 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 it's it's kind of like yeah well like wow you 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 really cross your legs you really point your feet like that was an amazing set whatever you know but right. here people with like people that go to theaters and especially that they're not from the Irish dancing world, they get really shocked. You know, the reaction is so different. They're like, wow. Like they, I think that they, they appreciate it more because they don't see it in on their everyday lives, you know? Um, right. And, and definitely the way we are um, appreciated in that world as an artist is different. You know, like I've never felt that uh, reception when I was a dancer, I was just like, Oh, he was a cool dancer. He's, one of the the, the uh, best dancers in the competition but that's it you know then you move on but here like people really really are looking forward to see you after the show to talk with you like they, they want to know more you know so um i think that's that's the huge difference between both worlds you know and um and yeah i mean definitely of course like nothing compares to seeing all these beautiful places beautiful theaters uh and full you know with all these people and just the tension yeah. and Everything that goes there is just, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's different. It's different to just go by yourself on that stage and just put pressure on you to make the perfect set instead of like going to a place where you're going to be, you know, just being vulnerable and just to see how people react from, to you, right. you know, so that is different and beautiful. Same right. Time. Yeah. Fran, what's your your uh, advice for someone who maybe where you were at in the sense that you had competed and you had you had reached something you could be really proud of with you know top placements and stuff like that, but they're contemplating maybe going into different avenues of Irish dance, whether it's forming their own little production company or collaborating with friends or it's joining a, a major production like like Trinity. What's your advice for them? A couple of things they need to keep in mind when they're making that decision. Well. Um... You know, I, I, I would say um, that it's really important. Um, it's kind of the advice that I give before to when you are competing, but it's the same here. Like, uh, you got to know that working on the arts, first of all, is very, very hard, very competitive, and um, and it's it's just difficult to live from art. And <laughs> But um, one thing that I always uh, have in consideration when moving to to um, the shows is that um i wanted to i was afraid to be like um you know like i i think like what i did in competitions was okay but i don't know if i'm gonna be as good 
as a performer now you know it's like it's just different i was learning steps and now i'm just i'm, I'm gonna be interpreting them you know like different mm -hmm. it, it's it's completely different and uh but i would say just like put out uh, put yourself out you know um go and audition to every show that you can even if it's not the biggest you know go do everything that you can possibly do and also um if you really want to do it like don't give up like um for me in my example i i, I start with like my own brand with my name you know like i was like i want to do my own stuff in mexico you know i want to do a few pieces for myself and other musicians or other uh dancers that would like to join and just to put out the work that you have and uh move like um it's important to know that what is going on in competitions is not everything like you gotta be experimental you know like you just take yourself try different things read uh watch videos um get talk with people you know about what is going on in the be part of the culture you know that's what i would say because being in competitions is not being fully in the culture that is just one part of it you really gotta be understanding about all these dancers that were before you um the masters that what michael fleckney did what colin don right. um probably one of the greatest dancers ever like you just gotta be into the culture like knowing musicians uh knowing all these type of uh different dances in ireland you know like be have a bigger perspective uh on that and uh and then you you will you will be more uh fitable for a show you know because like they're not always looking for the greatest dancer or like the, the most successful person out there you know so you just gotta um find that you know just be part of the culture more more involved you know not mm -hmm. just what you see on instagram <laughs> you just gotta be more deeper than that you know so uh that's that, that would be my advice because then you could you could have a perspective in your brain of what is good mm -hmm. and what is not really good you know uh, right. understanding the history of it um, that that would be my my advice you know Okay. And, and the last couple of questions I have for you, one, one would be, uh, you know, we've seen Irish dancing from not just Mexico, but a lot of the Southern you know, countries in South America starting to have schools and send dancers to worlds. And I think that, I think it's great to see you guys getting that involved uh, and embracing that culture. What do you think it is about Irish dancing that's resonated with people in your part of the world? That's a very interesting question, Richard, because uh, I always get this question with my Mexican friends here. They're like, but Irish dancing, why would you do that? Like, <laughs> exactly. And, and then yeah. at the beginning, I just couldn't explain it. I was like, I don't know the music, the rhythm, the sensation of just moving your legs, your feet, going fast, slow, jumping. I don't know. There's a bunch of things that I can say. But, uh, but I think definitely what uh, connects the Irish culture with the Latin American culture is that we have a lot in common, but one, the best one is, is that um, we use dance as a way of like, you know, um, surpassing all these situations in our lives. You know, at one point Irish people were uh, suffering when they came to America, you know, right. they, they had, they got to work to get their own stuff, you know? And I think that always dancing was their way of, you know, like, coming together, be more strong, keeping up, you know, and, uh, and for us, it's the same, to be honest, you know, like we found in dance and music that um, um, attachment of like, you know, like of uh, proudness of like uh, going for everything, even though that we had it rough as a culture, you know, like we had it rough, like mm -hmm. it, it's not easy to be conquered by other countries and then right. just trying to get your own stuff now, you know? And um, so I think that is very relatable. So when, when we move our feet here in Mexico, you know, we have uh, Mexican folklore or in other countries in Argentina, they, every, everybody has like this kind of percussive dance that they have. Um, and, and somehow it's just the rhythm that, uh, as I said at the beginning of the interview, the rhythm is the global language, you know, like we don't even know what is going on uh, mm -hmm. with their feet or their moves, but all we know is rhythm and that and that thing um, make us as um, countries move forward towards all these obstacles that we have. And that's what represents in my culture, you know, like dancing, that's the way of, you know, keep moving. And I see that the same in, with the Irish culture back in, in the past, you know? So um, I think that is what really connects us and when we're doing it, 
somehow it's just like me personally, I just, this was my, my opportunity to change my life as a regular person in Mexico to do something that most people can do, you know? Right. So, makes you unique. Uh, yeah. I see. It. Yeah. Makes you unique. So maybe that definitely. Okay. And so I, I guess lastly is, well, for one part of this last question would be what part of Mexico are you in? Um, well, I'm from a city called Puebla. Uh, and in that city, you might you might know about this hot sauce called Cholula. Have you ever heard oh, of it? Oh, yes. Cholula. I love Cholula. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from that town. Okay. And uh, uh, but right, um, right now I'm living in Mexico City and that's where I have my school and uh, my work. Everything that I do is in, in Mexico City. And yeah, that's where I'm from. Okay. And so the second part of that question, now that I know where you're at, is is what's what's Fran's future with Irish dancing in the next five years? What are you going to do in that area? Wow. That is a great question, man. Uh, well, um, I'm definitely, now that I just experienced all these things and that I've been uh, meeting all these amazing people during my dancing career, I think uh, my duty now is to connect my community, my friends, to all that every that I already experienced. Because when I was starting uh, to do Irish dancing, uh, this guy, Alex Arguelles, he he got me into that. He changed my life, you know? So that's what I want to do now. Like, he had the connection and he shared it with me and he completely transformed my life. So what I see myself in five years is like, I want to be uh, putting dancers out there in the world, you know, bringing Mexico to a better level, uh, uh, getting to know more of the Mexican culture with the Irish dancers and uh, but especially um, to help everyone not only my students to help every uh, Latin American person every uh, friend or a uh, person that will ask me for help like how, how do you how how do you do to get to to the professional shows well I met this person and I know them so I'm going to connect you you know I feel that um, that's the responsibility uh, that I and and the lesson that I learned um, after all these years, like it's it, it's not only about you uh, to transcend, is to connect people. So that is my my that's how I see myself in five years. You know, mm -hmm. uh, connecting people and, and helping my, my 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 friends to get to higher levels. You know, like I, I if I got six, I want them to be first. If I right. went to Trinity. Uh, I want them to be there as well. You know, I, I, I want them nothing but the best, you know, like I want them to surpass what we did and, and, and be there in history. So that's how I see myself, you know, mm -hmm. just helping people in any aspect that I can uh, to reach even better heights than I did or my friends that already uh, competed. Well, I, I always say that a good teacher is someone who wants more for their dancers than they were able to accomplish themselves. And it's, it's, you know, some people want to hold everything in and not let anyone be better than them, but it takes someone that with that humility and who really cares about people to try to get them even better than they were. So that's very good. If people want to find out more information about classes down there in Mexico city, maybe they want to take some classes for you or get a hold of you for a project or something like that. How can they get a hold of you, Fran? Okay, perfect. So you can, me on instagram as fran underscore irish d and the page of my school on instagram is inish free underscore g p so anything you need you can text me there very good well fran look i'm glad you came on and before we hang up on this this call i want to uh give uh mark howard a little, little credit i was asking him about bringing some people on from trinity and he he recommended i look you up so i want to give him appreciation for that as well so. uh, Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for that. Hey, all the best, man. I, I wish you well in everything you do. I think you're, you're an inspirational young man, and I think you're going to go places. No, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. I, I've been watching all your videos, and I'm glad that I'm now part of uh, <laughs> your journey with your podcast. And uh, I'm glad. I was excited. I was like, he wants me. I'll be there. I yep. just want to share. <laughs> so well, I'm glad to that. add you to the collection. This has been a good interview. Take care, Fran. Yep. Take care, you too. Bye-bye. Okay.